All right, let's check out these new uh, League SBCs. Uh, one guy is called Vilalba. I think they actually tell you the price of the whole entire SBC, if I'm not mistaken. So let me see what's up with that. So Vilalba is this one. I don't think they updated it on Footbin yet. Oh, no, they did. It's right there. Perfect. So let's see their in-game stats. So their in-game stats, obviously, this card lacks in finishing composure and stuff. So let's see what they do to this one. Okay, so they increase it to 71. He has the agility, bounce, reaction. So this one's an obvious one. Um, doesn't say how much the SBC is because it just recently came out, but I would definitely slap a sniper on him. He's got shot power, he's got long shots. Agility is kind of there. It's just to increase the finishing as much as possible because I think if you give a marksman to it, it's like a plus 10, so it just depends on the person, I guess. But I think increasing the composure on the card would be very helpful. He is four star, four star, so that's not bad. Um, and he is from uh, Paraguay, so. Paraguay players, they don't really have too many like really good players. So that's like a sentimental card too. That, or if you're a fan of the MLS, it's kind of worth doing as well. Um, Acosta. Acosta is this one. So the relation to this is a five-star skill move player with a three-star weak foot who has very good base card stats um, because he's a base card stat. Uh, he's a base card player, but then this drastically improves his card quite significantly. So as a cam, obviously we'll be missing that weak foot. Very very small player too. Five foot three is very very tiny. I would never use a card like that personally, even for the fun concept. Five foot three is like you're non-existent. Um, but a sniper on him. Would also be nice. He would be super, super agile on the ball, but I think increasing the composure and stuff would be would be the ideal situation. Let's check out the actual SBC. So I'm pretty sure it's just a matter of like building the clubs, right? So Atlanta United, Colorado Rapids. It's it's interesting because I would love to do this for fun, like if I grind the game a lot and I got untradable gold, old gold packs or untradable MLS, like it would be like the event, right? So like if the MLS, if this is an MLS SBC, there would be an event where like if you play the game consistently, 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 there would be different ways of unlocking MLS packs. Um, I'm just thinking about like regular video games that aren't EA because EA is never going to do stuff like this. But it would just be really cool, right? Because you can get like untradable MLS packs. And then you could take it from there and try to unlock these cards through playing the actual game, right? So I want to see if I have any players. Because I did do the bronze pack method for a little bit. Um, and I'm pretty sure that's the method you probably have to do if you want to try to unlock these cards. Let's see what I have in my teams. Kind of curious about each individual club. So that's two right there. I think they also... Austin FC... What the heck? That's real? Okay. Uh, we'll do that. Take that out. Chicago Fire. We got a bronze. See, it's like the gold, uh, the bronze pack method. That's how I got these cards. Silver, bronze to silver. Got those cards. That's how you have to unlock it. It's such a tedious, like... It's such a tedious process to do. Like, you shouldn't have to do this. But, like, it just is what it is, right? I think for me personally, I'm probably going to sell these cards. FC Dallas. I think each one of these guys are um, sellable, right? Yeah, so let's see how much they cost now. I think it's mostly, like, the silvers because it's, it requires a certain team rating, right? So this is a 58, so 58 doesn't really help. I think it's mostly, like, silvers, but then silvers I don't really open packs for. Yeah, I'm pretty sure these are all untradables. Yeah, all untradables. What do you get for rewards with each one of these? Silver, silver, premium silver, gold, gold, silver. Bunch of silver packs. Yeah, the packs are not really that good. Yeah, this is this this right here is strictly like a bronze pack method thing for sure. Yeah, this is definitely strictly a, a bronze pack method thing. 
Um, yeah, so true, man. I can't believe they let us grind our asses off and not just make it a little bit easier. The pack's not even great, so why not? It's just, there needs to be, like, a grind concept for these cards, right? Like, and even if you don't play FIFA for a while, if you come back and you do play it for a long time, like, if you put, like, 40 hours into it, like, if I put 40, 50 hours into it, I should be able to unlock those cards. And 40, 50 is me pushing it by a lot, you know? But if you just come back to the game and there is ways of unlocking the card through gameplay, because obviously they do it through menu content of SBCs, right? So if there is ways of getting like MLS on old packs or, you know, you get specific team packs like Atlanta United or whatever, I think that'd be, I think that'd be really cool to be able to, uh, to get these cards. Because I've, I've noticed this trend with EA too, that like even foot drafts, like foot draft rewards, they don't give you good foot draft rewards. I think it's like very, very small in regards to getting good rewards. And then you win the whole thing and you don't really get anything, right? So um, they just nerfed everything. I, I think what EA has done with this year's game is they've completely cash grabbed it, right? So it's just a matter of like you spending a lot of money and then just putting it, your cards that you're getting from packs into SPCs, right? Or if you use the market, they hate market people because it's their way of taking away that business aspect of theirs, right? But um, I mean, it is what it is, right? I think they nerfed the pack rewards on purpose. Look at the price of the Bundesliga bronzes and silvers. The Bundesliga has strong pack rewards. Yeah. Scream Insigne is, is nice. I, people like Insigne and Mertens. I don't personally like those cards that much. I actually did the silver pack method. Risky but more fun. Oh, I see what you're saying. Don't call me buddy guy. What are you saying, Joel? Uh, Non-rare defenders from La, uh, La Liga bid for 500, and they instant sell when, so, when some SPCs come, but it's not always working, depending on what the SPC they release. Oh, I see what you're saying. Okay. What would that achieve in the end? They just uh, This just pushed down everyone who was formerly at 1500. Oh, the division rival skill cap thing? It's just a matter of, like, dude, any video game you play, if you get shit on by a good player, you get shit on by a good player. Call of Duty, Fortnite, whatever it is. I think, like... You can have division rivals as a game mode. I just think personally that they should have added regular divisions into the game where it's like divisions 10 to 7, 6 to 4, and then 3 to 1, or whatever it was, right? Division rivals is a good game mode to learn, uh, quote unquote, learn to get better because this game is, I don't look at this game in, in that sense of winning and losing because it's not that type of game in my opinion. You can win games, you can manage wins, sure, but you don't feel like you do because of the inconsistencies in certain things. Um, I just think that they should have added a mode like that. Because it, it feels like the only real mode I can play right now is online friendlies, which is like, people don't always do stuff in that because you get 500 coins each, but it's like, whatever, you know? Yeah, yeah, the whole, like I said, like, it's not, it's not like a thing where you have to explain. You can definitely see that the way that EA have implemented stuff in this game is strictly you spending money on it, right? They'll give you gameplay content, like uh, like an Mbabu or all that kind of stuff. But the, that gameplay content just doesn't work for this game because these three game modes in conjunction with each other, it's, it's, the, it's the most terrible balance of game modes you'll ever see in a video game. It makes sense if your skill tier is around 1500, but even still, even still, because 1500, like you're kind of like a mid-tier player or like a, a below high-tier player, right? Uh, if you do it seriously. So that system is okay if it's if you have another game mode, you know? I think they're an example of like, oh, but your other game mode is friendly. That's not, that ain't it. You get 500 coins each game, you know what I'm saying? Like you're, you play 10 games in online friendlies, you get 500 coins. You play 10 games in Division Rivals, you're building up towards weekly rewards. Um, yeah, I don't know. I think our biggest hope of next-gen consoles next year, we get a new engine and hopefully new coding so the inconsistent gameplay is gone. It's the more the new coding, the engine is not the reason why the gameplay is inconsistent. If I talked about it back in FIFA 14 and 15 and with a different engine, the engine is not the issue. It's definitely something else for sure. Probably not, Jim Lad. Probably not. Again, it's just discussions, but like, like I said, the the concept of this game, people always say, like, why am I so negative about it? I'm negative because this company and the people that work on this game, like, I get it with the cash grab aspect, but 
other games have the cash grab aspect. Other ga all games have the cash grab aspect, but they do it in a certain way where it's still fun. I play Yu-Gi-Oh! Duel Links on mobile, and the game is really paid to win. It's kind of like this game, right? It's really, really paid to win. But the thing is, is that it's still fun to try to grind decks by actually playing the game because they give you they give you rewards every time you you win lose and tie a match and those rewards lead you to getting better decks each, each game each game they give you something right like if you play 10 games of fifa it's 500 coins each game that's 5k at the end of the day you know what i'm saying um also i play like mobile legends mobile legends is also another pay to win game if you want to play in the competitive scene right and, and mobile legends and they have a concept where it's like, you know, you have to buy the actual characters. But they still have a concept where if you play the game constantly, you're gaining coins to buy the characters. There's still a gameplay aspect if you decide to go free to play in it. You know what I'm saying? And then I'm trying to think of like other games. Call of Duty is the same. You know, you don't have to play against a competitive playlist. You don't have to, if you're really good at Call of Duty, like Shroud has fun shitting on whatever tier player he's coming up against. You know what I'm saying? Um, if they had a specific game mode for competitive, then you play that mode for competitive to specifically find competitive players, right? But they don't have that because it just wouldn't make sense. Everyone always complains about skilled game matchmaking in other communities. In our community, it's like people just accept the stuff that comes to us. But like Fortnite, for instance, I remember like when an update came out. And Fortnite didn't say if they change the skill-based matchmaking or not. And people were like, yo, like, why am I coming up against more sweaty players? Like, this is hard to play all day. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's, it, that's a thing in video games, right? Even in CSGO, right? What do people do on CSGO? If they get to Global Elite, they'll make a, a Smurf account so that they can, they can play lower tiers and play with their boys and have fun and, you know not their fault they're better at the game and now they have to always play against the best of the best it's it just doesn't make sense man like literally the most casual game mode in fifa right now is the first 10 games of foot champs which is insane because you know the first the first 10 games of foot champs let's just say you started it on the friday night right you can come up against any tiered player. Like, you can come up against the best tiered players, the mid-tiered players, the lower tiered players. It's possible in those first 10 games when you play on the Friday, right? Sunday, you should never play foot chant all your games on Sunday. Sunday is the sweatiest you'll ever find games, right? But, um, like, the Friday, Saturday, when people don't have their skill rating and stuff, yeah, like, you can come up against anything, right? So, it's just insane because I'm, I'm strictly a gameplay guy. Like, I, I know that when I watch, like, Twitch streams and stuff, Everyone does menu content, and I and I understand why they do because I was I was even watching like Nick stream of the day, and he's like, "Bro, I don't like having to do this, but as a content creator, you're forced to do it because there's nothing rewarding about the gameplay, gameplay wise and gameplay content wise, that I should be doing that stuff for. That's why he'll do the bronze pack method on the stream, and people are cool with it because there's no other way of." progressing in the game other than doing really really fucking stupid things the transfer market should be one of the ways to make coins absolutely 100 percent, but it shouldn't be the only way you know what i'm saying so that's pretty much it